In this video, we'll look at hypothesis testing using the TI-84 graphing calculator. And we'd like to use the full procedure and have all the information stored in a nice report. The first thing we want to do is write our hypothesis statements. For our example here, the first one, we'll be looking at testing the mean with Population standard deviation no. With all hypothesis tests, the first thing you want to do is set up your hypotheses. So we start off with H zero. H1, and then we decide whether we're using the mean or a proportion. We're using the mean here, so we put in the symbol for the mean, and it would go in both. And then we want to identify the alternative hypothesis from the claim. In this problem, we're looking at a person as a swimmer, an athlete, and they had a mean time of 16.43 seconds, and then they have a new pair of goggles. And the hypothesis test is to see whether the new goggles will help them swim faster. Swimming faster would mean having a greater average time, or sorry, a smaller average time. So um, mu here represents the average time with the new goggles, and the alternative hypothesis would be that the new time is less than the old time, which is 16.43. And from there, you can set up your null hypothesis to either be uh, greater than or equal or just equal to, and use the same number. So there we have our hypothesis statements. to state what type of test this is. This is a left-tailed test. And we like to state the level of significance. And that's given to be 0.05 and then we put in our sample statistics so we have a uh, oh and we have the uh, population standard deviation And that's given to us at the beginning in the bold. It says that his standard deviation for the uh, previous swims was 0 0.8, 0 0.8 seconds. And then uh, for the new thing, we have a sample mean is uh, 16 seconds. And uh, we're supposed to state what type of distribution we would use. And 
and it's a normal distribution since we know the population standard deviation. Let's put this here. All right. Next up, we want to calculate our p-value and compare that with alpha. And that's where we use the graphing calculator. So we'll pull up the graphing calculator. And we do stat. And we'll go over to tests. And since we're using the normal distribution for the mean, this would be a z-test. And we have the statistics rather than the data itself. So we keep it on stats. This first number is the one that appears in the hypotheses, 16.43. And we have our population standard deviation is 0.08, rather, sorry, 0.8. And then our sample mean is 16. And our sample size, which was not written down, uh, 15 swims, it says. So n would be 15. So put 15 there. And then here you pick the alternative hypothesis, which would be a less than symbol. So we'd pick the one in the middle. And you can actually have it draw that if you like. We'll calculate it. And the p-value shows up as a lowercase p here, This, the third item from third line, second item with an equal sign there. So our... Uh, our p-value is about 0, 1, 8, 6, 8. All right, and that's what we use the graphing calculator for. And you can use that for getting the uh, graph as well. Let's go to draw see a nice picture there and you can use that to get the picture of the p-value. p-value is that red shaded area there. So I can use that and you can take a picture with your phone if you don't have, or I don't have the emulator. You can take a picture of that uh, calculator screen. And, uh, and then we want to make our decision. So the decision is what? Well, you compare the p-value to alpha, the level of significance. p is less than alpha, so we reject the null hypothesis. And we reject it because p is less than alpha. All right, now we make our conclusion. And uh, since you reject the null, that means you would support the alternative hypothesis. So we say that the uh, sample data supports the claim that, and we're going to figure out what this means, that uh, Jeffrey's mean time is oh, say Jeffy Jeffrey swims faster with the new pair of goggles. There we go. And that's a complete hypothesis test there using the p-value method. Now, this could be done different ways depending on whether we had sample data or not. If I was given sample data, then I would have to calculate the sample mean and sample size. And on the graphing calculator, 
I would then need to change this first option from So if I had, sorry, we had a, a quick issue. If we had uh, sample data, we would still go to stat, tests, and z-test. Um, but the first option, we would switch to data there. And uh, we would actually have the data stored in list L1. All right, remember, stat, edit, and you would put your data in here, one by one. And then stat, tests, and you would tell it data. Now you still would have the same number at the top be the 16.43 and the same standard deviation 0.8 and in L1 you would have the 15 the swim times from Jeffrey and the uh, everything else would stay the same and it would of course give you the same results assuming the average of those times was 16 and there were 15 of them so uh, just remember how we did that for the intervals I don't have uh, time to do an example for all of these. Um, I'll do one more example for the mean though, and so we'll kind of copy this down. <clears throat> 